Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll show you an easy way to differentiate the water disorders uh, so you can always get those up down arrow questions right. So, one thing you need to know is that all these disorders share two things in common. They all present with polyuria and they all have low urine osmolality, but it's all for different reasons. So you might get low urine osmolality because you're drinking a lot of water, as in primary polydipsia, and this uh, lots of water will make your plasma osmolality low and that will lower your urine osmolality. Or it's because you do not have ADH or your kidney is resistant to ADH and so you are excreting free water in the urine and that's also lowering urine osmolality. So the key differentiating feature uh, of all these disorders is the water deprivation test. Normally when you restrict water as in this test for like 12 hours your plasma osmolality will obviously rise and this would stimulate the hypothalamus, the osmoreceptors there, uh, which would feed onto the pituitary to increase ADH. ADH in turn would go to the kidney and help reabsorb free water so you can dilute this osmolality a bit, this uh, plasma osmolality. And this will in turn concentrate the urine or raise the urine osmolality. So the normal response here is on the y-axis, here you got the uh, urine osmolality. So normally uh, urine osmolality should keep going up as you are deprived of water because uh, the more you restrict water, the more the ADH, the more the urine becomes concentrated until it reaches the maximum level of concentration. When we inject exogenous vasopressin at this point, you already have reached your maximum concentration. Um, of ADH, you've already uh, of your own endogenous ADH, and you've already reached your maximum urine osmolality and concentrating ability. Uh, so this is the normal response. So at baseline, your serum sodium is normal. After water restriction for 12 hours, urine osmolality after water deprivation is supposed to increase, and this is an indication that the kidney is responding well to enough ADH. Urine osmolality with exogenous vasopressin injection should not change because you've already reached your maximum with your endogenous ADH. That means your pituitary is intact. It's as if you're saying, nah, I'm good. I don't need any exogenous ADH. And in primary polydipsia, uh, really, this person is perfectly normal. Their pituitary is producing enough ADH, their kidney is responding normally. Uh, the real problem here is this person is just drinking a lot of water. So their um, water restriction response curve would be the same as in a normal person. However, at baseline, because these people are drinking a lot of water, their serum sodium would be low because of dilution. Uh, with water restriction, however, urine osmolality uh, would increase, indicating a normal response by the kidney to enough ADH. Uh, and so their urine osmolality with vasopressin injection will not change, much like the normal response, because they have reached their maximum concentrating ability because they have an intact pituitary and so it's not um, good again all right so the only problem with these people is just that they're drinking a lot of water but with water restriction um, these people just respond very normally with the central diabetes insipidus however really the problem lies in a central deficiency uh, your hypothalamus or pituitary is not producing enough ADH in response 
to increase serum osmolality and so this is never going to make it to the kidneys and so the kidneys will have no signal to reabsorb water in the first place. And so at baseline these people are excreting a lot of free water and because they cannot reabsorb free water into the blood their serum sodium is gonna go high up all right uh, now what would be the effect after water restriction after water restriction these people are not producing enough ADH in the first place and so the urine osmolality will stay the same as you can see here it's staying the same no matter how how thirsty they are or how their uh, osmolality serum osmolality is going up still the urine is excreting a lot of free water and still the urine has a low osmolality so there is no change indicating that the kidney has not received enough ADH to respond however the key distinction here between this and nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is be when you inject exogenous vasopressin these people show a large increase in serum uh, in urine osmolality this is an indication that the deficiency is central. These people were not producing enough uh, vasopressin, so when you administered it exogenously, they showed a normal response and their urine osmolality went up. So it's not good. Their pituitary is not good. Now I need to contrast this with nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, where the problem lies in the kidneys. The brain is perfectly normal, the pituitary is perfectly normal, but the kidney is not responding. It's resistant to the effects of ADH. So it's essentially the same presentation as central diabetes insipidus. So at baseline, these people are also excreting free water. And so they are not retaining it into the blood and so their serum sodium is going to be high. Uh, their blood is concentrated. Instead of their urine being concentrated, their blood is concentrated. You get the idea? Now, uh, what would be the effect after we restrict water from these patients, uh, increasing the serum osmolality to monitor their response? Their urine osmolality after water deprivation shows no change, as you can see here. All along, the urine osmolality is low when it should be concentrated, when it should be retaining free water, uh, when it should be um, uh, reabsorbing water into the blood. Now, how do you? Um, this is an indication that their kidney is not responding well. Uh, so it's either because it's not receiving enough ADH or because it's resistant to its effects. How can we differentiate that? inject vasopressin when we inject vasopressin here still there is no change because the problem really lies in the kidney being resistant to whatever ADH is being produced and this means that the pituitary actually is intact and that the problem lies in the kidney so it's not um, good okay so the, the key distinction between central and nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is response to vasopressin injection. Because in central diabetes insipidus, the deficiency was in vasopressin, it responded normally. But in nephrogenic, the problem really was resistance to whether it's endogenous or exogenous ADH, uh, the kidney is not going to respond. So urine osmolality stays the same all through the water deprivation test. All right. Guys, I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.